Right, a few things about functions in this clip. Uh, first, we're going to have a look at inverse functions, and then we're going to look at composite functions. Now, I've defined two functions here. f takes x and maps it onto x squared minus 10. It accepts any real number as an input, provided it's greater than or equal to 0, so provided it's not negative. And g takes x and maps it onto 2x add 3, and you can put any number you like into that function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the inverse function of f. Now, as explained in the text, uh, the technique for doing this is to write it uh, as x equals y squared minus 10. So, basically from the definition, instead of f of x, write x, and instead of x on the other side, write y. And now we make y the subject. So straight away I can see that y equals the square root of x plus 10. That might take you a couple of lines, but we get to the same answer, square root of x plus 10. Now, the problem is, what numbers are allowed in here? Notice that when we give a definition of a function, we need the domain. We need to know what numbers are allowed in. So what numbers go in, can go into this? Well, the answer is this. What comes out of f, what comes out of f must, go, must be the numbers that go into the inverse of f. In other words, if I'm thinking of a number... I square it and subtract 10 and give you an answer. Those are that makes the, those possible answers are the range of f. Now here I'm only allowed to use positive, uh, sorry, non-negative numbers. So I'm thinking of a number. It's not negative. I square it and subtract 10. Think what possible answers I can get from that. Pause and then come back. Yeah, the answer is that it's all the numbers provided they're at least at least minus 10. I can get any number from minus 10 upwards and that means that the inverse function can accept any number any number at all provided it's at least minus 10. Now that confuses people a lot but basically what can go into the inverse is what comes out of the function. In other words if I'm thinking of a number square root and take away 10 those possible answers are now your question to work out what my number was in the first place. Loads of different ways of putting that, I suppose. Here's, here I'm just going to draw a graph using Geometry's Sketchpad. Uh, plot new function, I'm going to plot, plot the graph of uh, x squared minus 10. And what we'll see is, provided we don't allow negative numbers in, uh, that's gone a bit off the page, so I'll bring it back a little bit. Uh, provided we, ooh, crikey, that wasn't meant to happen. Provided we um, don't allow negatives in, we should see that it's a one-to-one -one function. Now, from the graph straight away, you can see it's not a one-to-one -one function because this x value here gives the same y value, this, as this x value. I mean, you can see that because there's two different x values for the same y value. So if we ignore all numbers to the left of 0, then we get a 1 to 1 function. So just take that over there and make it all numbers to the left of 0, to the right of 0, sorry. It's now a 1 to 1 function. Now look at the numbers that can come out of this function. You're going to have to ignore this negative bit. All the numbers that can come out of the function are minus 10 and above. And this is the range. The y values that can come out of the function are called the range. The x values that are allowed in are the domain, the y values that can come out is the range. Now when we're working the other way round, uh, the inverse in other words, the domain of the inverse is what numbers came out of the function in the first place. The numbers that are allowed into the inverse are what comes out of the function. In other words, the domain of the inverse is the same as the range of the function. And the range of the function is minus 10 and up. So the, dom so the domain of the inverse is minus 10 and up. Uh, back to this, I should write this then as f of x rather than y. So if I scrub that out and wrote f of x equals the square root, and it would be best if I wrote, sorry, f to the minus 1, f inverse, not f to the minus 1, f inverse of x. Uh, uh, I'll write this more better right here. Um, so, oh, crikey, that's not a very good rubber. So what I'm going to do here is just write it in the same form that the question was given in. So the answer should really look like this. f inverse takes x and maps it onto the square root of x plus 10. 
x can be any real number provided it's at least minus 10. Now let's have a look at the next part of this question which was dealing with composite functions. Now composite is when we build functions on top of functions. So we feed, it's a, like a two-stage function machine. This is f of g. Now if you read it like that it becomes obvious which you do first. f of g of x means do g of x first and then feed that into f. So what comes out of g goes into f. This comes out of g, so it's this which we feed into f, so we square that and subtract 10. So very straightforward, f of g takes x and gives you what comes out of g squared, add, squared and subtract 10. Now what numbers are allowed into this? Well, the problem is that f will only accept numbers which are it won't accept negative numbers. So g cannot give us a number which it, g can't provide us with a, non -neg with a negative number. I'll say that again. f will only accept numbers which are not negative. So g cannot give us a negative an answer. So we must make sure that the numbers we feed into g make sure g is positive. And the numbers which make this positive are uh, x values which are at least, just doing a bit of a calculation, at least minus one and a half. Any number which is at least minus one and a half makes two x plus three at least zero. So we want g to give us a number which is at least zero. That works when x is at least minus one and a half. So x is greater than or equal to minus three over two. And there's also a real number, but I won't, I won't add that bit just yet because a bit, bit cramped for space here. G of f is different though, because G of f takes what comes out of f and feeds it into G. Now out of f comes x squared minus 10, feeding that into G, we get 2 times x squared minus 10, 2 times the value that we feed into G, that's what comes out of f, um, add 3. And we could sort of sort this out by multiplying out brackets and so on. Now, what numbers are allowed into this? Well, f, f meet needs numbers which are at least zero. G couldn't care less what it takes. So only numbers which are at least zero are allowed into f in the first place. So x is a real number, provided it's not negative. Later on, I'll do an exam question on this. It's going to be similar sort of stuff, but an exam question might make it a bit clearer when you look through the mark scheme.